fits at a really comfortable spot on my weight. You are not alone in your job. Migrants, Dove Men Plus Care Antiperspirant. As usual for joining us today, how are you? Oh. Welcome back to Bachelor Happy Hours Golden Hour. Thanks again, as usual, for joining us today. How are you doing, Susan? I'm doing great. I'm almost rehabbed here. <laughs> I know you so, and I with our headbands on and our uh, burned faces, but we're almost there. The truth? Uh, I know you're a little bit ahead of me by three days. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, we're so glad to be back. If, if you haven't heard any of our recent episodes yet, you don't know what you're missing. We've been having a ball. We're answering questions. We're talking about our lives. And we just love doing this. We always love talking about our lives, and we know that you want to find us, and you know the drill by now. If you have a question for us or you want to leave a comment, all you have to do is go to bachelornation.com slash golden hour. Send them our way. We love answering your questions. We've You can ask us questions about our facelift. We're dying to talk about it. Absolutely. All right. Today, we're going to get into more of the questions, but first... Kathy, let's get into oh. last night's episode of the Oh, Golden Susan, Susan, Susan. Okay, we got to start. We got to start with chalk. Did you love the beginning where Joan, so he has, um, what, two grandchildren, Taylor and Tyler, or his children, I don't know who, but she's talking to the little boy with his teeth the and his smile. I, I mean, that was a very sweet moment there. And I thought that just shows how Joan is really close yes. to her family Let, and wants a guy that she can be close with his family. Let's start with Guy. First of all, he made me cry. I actually teared up last night. Wait, wait, was before you, whoa, 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 day. wait. Before you get into Guy, did you that hear one more date. thing? Of, wait, but one more thing about Jock, since we're going out of order here. We did. <laughs> uh, so what? You know, let's. we're saving the first, for, we're saving the best for first. Um, she said to Chuck, did you hear her tell him that she wants a man that she sees a future with and is and a commitment? And she said he was on. Did you hear her say something to that effect? That, that she, she wants- feels good with him. I, she's been saying that the whole time and that she was attracted to him from the very beginning. And that she said that when strong- he came back from his mother's funeral, she felt she differently. So- she just knew. I mean, I just think she was scared we- he wasn't going to come back. Yeah. Well, we yeah, already so know that. Part. I think I think the next question, Susan, is for Chalk and then we can move on to Guy. I just want to see the ring he picked out for. What do you think? (laughs) I think he'll do good. He is eager to please. Yeah. And And, and, when she says, I see a future with him and has no reservations, I mean, that tells me everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. And she, a couple times, she referred to somebody as reminding her of her husband, of her late husband. Yeah. Which is interesting. But let's start with Guy. All right. He actually opened up i mean he really did he i mean opened I up. Say, he was yeah. more vulnerable his yeah. children his sisters his you know he made me cry he was amazing last night he said um you know if you make a wish and you throw something into like tahoe then your wish will be granted mm-hmm. he said the prize at the end is worth taking any risk mm-hmm. like i think he knows what's you know, what's at stake. And I really feel like he was putting his all into this, this date with, with her. He, he, he was very vulnerable and he's allowing himself to love again. And I just don't want him to get his heart broken. And I feel like he is. She brought, uh, Joan brought up John again. You know, this is a prevailing theme on this show, uh, not this episode, the show, Mm -hmm. where we're going back, we're talking about John, the guilt, can she commit? And I think to some people that that may be a turnoff because, you know, why is she there if she can't commit? I personally Mm -hmm. think... Joan is ready to commit, but I think she still struggles a little bit with, uh, you know, the death of John. And and that's certainly understandable, right? Sure, sure. It's it's three and a half years. But one thing I noticed, and she repeated this with two of them, Kathy. Yeah. She said, I'm worried he wouldn't pick me. I know. I heard that. What the hell? I don't know. She said that to Jordan about Jordan and... Guy and Jordan. Exactly. And that's so interesting. Um, 
that she would say that because although well we'll get to Jordan in a minute let's finish with with um guy guy um, did a great he, job he, he opened did. himself up he and said the, how important family is to yes. him and, and that that's important it is with Joan and that he's going all in his mm-hmm. family seemed to love her and said they hadn't seen their dad behave this way in a long time how about when he was talking to his sons and they're yeah. like, Dad. And he was like, that's when he teared up and it got yeah. me crazy. I was crazy. And then and then he said, sometimes you've got to rush in where fools don't go or something. I'm yeah. not, you know, it's not yeah. a direct quote. He I just a- think for the first time, Guy put himself that yeah. I, I want her. Um you know, not as much as as Ch- and crazy. then and then he said, sometimes you've got to rush in where fools don't go, or her, and said they hadn't seen their dad behave this way in a long time. How about when he was talking to his sons, and they're yeah. like, "Dad," and he was like, "That's when he teared up and it got yeah. me crazy." I was crazy. And then and then he said, sometimes you've got to rush in where fools don't go, or something. I'm yeah. not, you know, it's not yeah. a direct quote. He I was, just think for the first time, guy put himself that yeah. I I want her. Um, you know, not as much as as chalk in his no, behavior, no. but you could but tell he's, he he's really more guarded, yeah. As well as we'll go to the next one, my Pascal. Pascal. Let uh, me just tell you, I loved all of it. I loved the energy. Maybe because I'm in the salon, I was in the salon. So my life compared to his, like I kept doing comparison things all the way. He stole my heart. You know, you you guys can talk hair all night long. It'll be titillating discussion. Everyone will be snoring at the table. <laughs> um, but I, Pascal did say I like to be in charge. And I think that's very clear about him. I yes. don't think... I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't think in the show he wants a partner as much as he wants a peacock. You know, he wants someone to show off. He wants I Joan to sh- that. I mean, he wants a good looking uh, woman, but he wants to be in love. He's again, he's another one that is protecting himself. He's mm-hmm. had billions of girlfriends, they said, but nothing serious he really wants. But I don't know that he's ready to say, I want to marry you. Well, I want to. I, I, I don't know. I you. think we got that teaser where um, Pascal's daughter, I think her oh name is Natalie. Gosh, I was so mad. <laughs> Natalie said, "You know, he, but what? He, what? If I heard correctly, what she he actually said you. was, yeah, I don't think you. my dad won't choose you.' Which is a double negative. Which means yes. she's saying, yeah, it's out there that he could choose you.' I think Maxime, his son, um, you know, they they know their dad. I think the most touching thing for me. I know I sound sort of you know sarcastic or whatever, but I thought he showed a lot more emotion to his son, Maxime. You know, I love you, son. You know, I've always loved you. Like, I'm not hearing that to Joan. I'm hearing that to yeah. his son. Yeah, well, that's his family. How about well, that little wait a grandson? Minute. Excuse me. Wait, the Susan. little tooth in the front. Oh, my God. I, I want to take him home with me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said that's his family. If he's on here to find love, Joan would become his family. Well, so for yes, him. understood. But yeah. to open up on TV and talk to your family, yes, you're going to say those things. Okay. I, you know. I, I I mean, I just, listen, I'm sure Pascal is a nice guy. I'd love to meet him, but I don't think Joan is his woman. I don't think he's her guy. I think he's interesting, great TV uh, for some people. Um, I did find it interesting that Joan said uh, he lives epic like John did. I think yeah. that's what attracts her to Pascal. He has money. He he's takes guy, charge. Yeah. You know, he'll fly he's, in a jet to Paris. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going to do all those things. And that's, quote, epic living like I guess jo- her husband treated her. But other yeah. than that, I don't see the connection with those two. I really don't. Well, that's your opinion. Which, which you're, guess you're what, allowed. Susan? You're but allowed. you know what? It mm. makes him available for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I love Chicago. I used to live there. So two Speaking Chicago, of Chicago dates. Chicago. Two Chicago Two dates. Chicago. Moving on to Jordan. Do you love it? Okay. Okay. Can I'm just going to, I got to say one thing about Jordan. In short, he is not ready to commit. And in fact, <sighs> yeah, I was, was not obvious. surprised at all that, that he, he was sent home. home. Yeah. Not at all. He, he just he as couldn't get clearly it out. said, I don't think he is ready or at least during filming, I think he, he was wants to ready. be ready, but he's not 100 percent or or perhaps now this is a perhaps she, Joan isn't the right woman. It's possible you know, when you really feel it, you're going to say it. 
Yeah. And well, I also think, you know, he said he had walls up. Joan mentioned it too. Walls up, not open to the process. I think that's very true. You and I've talked about this. Mm -hmm. We believe in the process. That's why we would love to have had a second chance. Uh, it can work. I don't think it's working for Jordan and and Joan. Um, and Joan, again, you know, she's talking about the fun time. Literally, those were her words. I have such a fun time with him. That yes, is that's not all she said. The and stuff. the kissing, the kissing was not Oh, there. the kissing. Not that there. is not the stuff of romance and falling in love and being engaged. I just... Well, I, and let me ask you something, Kathy. Yeah. When yeah. you're dating somebody... At, at, I my can't favorite. remember. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> when you're dating someone, let me let me rewind my mind. Okay, I I'm mean, there. Go you ahead. didn't do a lot of dating because you got married so young, so you might yeah. not get this. But when I'm dating somebody, the best part is the kissing. I look forward to the kiss. No, and I mean, I look for, it's the whole intimate thing. It's wait the a minute, kissing. I'm not finished yet. All right. I look forward to the kiss that somebody knows how to kiss. Mm -hmm. So you have to if you will, make out to see if that vibe is there, if that connection is there, Can I just if that say, chemistry is there. And she is not making out with any of them except well, for Chalk. I agree with all that. A tiny bit with Pascal in another episode, but yeah. that that's as a tell-all to me, watching her kiss uh, these To men. me, first of all, I just want to say I'm very impressed with you, Susan. Even while you struggle to know what hooking up means, you've got making out down. So congratulations. I, know making out. <laughs> um, I think you're showing your age. I think that I, I agree with you to a Wait, point. They don't say making out anymore. What do I? Come I, on, I just Kat, told what you. would you know? You got married at twelve, and you know what? <laughs> you don't have a boyfriend. Oh. So come on, I'm going to teach you, Kath. <laughs> you're not teaching me to make out. Thank you very much. No, I can do no. just fine on myself. Thank you very much. But I think that these other guys, including Jordan, you know, they love their kids. Um, they they talk about, you know, uh, Jordan talked about his divorce from 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. These are people that have had rich lives. Mm -hmm. They've had ups and downs just like we've had. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in this case, um, there, there just isn't that connection with Joan. Um, and I think Jordan... When when she sent him home last night, I don't think he looked sad. He, I think, uh, you know, maybe I he was think, a little embarrassed or yeah. whatever that, that that he was. He didn't but I don't think he was upset. surprised. And then well, she walked him out. Knew. She walked yeah. him out, and they didn't have much to say out there. It was really nice getting to know you. Yep. Yeah, okay. but you know what? Well, that was pretty obvious. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, listen, wouldn't you rather have that than a broken heart? Wouldn't you rather have, well, you know what? Yeah, uh, like maybe with he'll Gary, be the next with, Golden Bachelor. <laughs> he could maybe, be. Yeah. He could be. In the end. But the point is, I love the fact that they both seem to realize and put it out there on national television, Bachelor Nation, Jordan's a great guy, but he wasn't for her and she wasn't for him. Yeah, that's, um, simple. that's simple. You know, I, I, I think... I think it was a great episode in terms of we're narrowing it down really quickly. Um, but you and I'm still envious, man, that she seems to have found a man she loves. I can't wait for the men tell all to, you know, to see what How they about say. All about. the people that Chuck had there. That was beautiful, too. He's got a lot of friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Family, it's, it's, friends, I, and what the, they planted that's what's that great tree. About that was this so beautiful. Show. Isn't that what you like about this show, though? We see family. We see sure. it's not just two young people falling in love and, mm -hmm. you know, picking up and moving to New York City. City. It's fan it's people that have lives and, and how about have the loved. dad? The, was he wasn't he the father in law? Kathy's dad. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He was special. Oh, oh and yeah. he just you know he just he, he told him generous. you're in love. He looked at him and said, "I see it in your eyes." And how and welcome he wasn't he was quite he to ready. He wasn't quite ready to actually say the words. He said everything else. Who were we talking about? It. Chalk. Yes, but yeah, right I then, Chuck, as he I heard Chuck say he was going to go all in. As he walked her to the car, yeah, that's when he said it. He, he said, "I love said you." It. Yes, I, you know what? I must have been taking a sip of vodka. I did not hear that. <laughs> I did not. I missed he that. He finally opened up. He said, she, "I love you." He, she felt it. Yep. Okay, I'm going to rewind it and listen. <laughs> if if that if he said that after sitting with his father-in-law, and he wasn't denying how he felt. His and father, father or his father? I'm confused now. Who was he sitting with? The older Kathy's man. Kathy's father. That's yeah. Kathy's father or his father? No, I thought it was Kathy's father. Okay. Well, he wasn't married to Kathy. Oh. 
Who's Kathy's Kathy? the one he was engaged to for like eight or nine years and she passed away. They never did marry. That was her dad? Uh, yes, I believe yes, because so. she passed away. He buried I'll check his with daughter. my writers, but I think yeah. so. <laughs> Anyhow, that father. <laughs> yeah. He's the one that said, I'm looking in your eyes. I see it in your eyes that you're in love with her. You're yeah. in love. And that's yeah. when he, I feel like he finally accepted it and he was able to say it. Yeah, and I loved. I, I loved noticed the, that Joan needed to hear it from any of them or all of them for her to make that decision. Yeah, Did I don't know. Agree? I found it touching. Um, I found it very touching that Kathy's dad a was there. It shows that he has such a strong relationship with mm-hmm. Chuck, or seemingly so. But also that they were. He was so welcoming to Joan. Like those are the little nuggets mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. show that that I feel like. Oh, they captured it. You know, they yeah. caught the love of yeah. older people and what it means to have a relationship yeah. with um, an older person. You know, what we have our children, we have grandchildren, we have friends. In Chalk's case, he has this woman that he, uh, you know, came that close to marriage with. And so her dad, Kathy's dad, is such an important part of his life. I love those parts of the show. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's what gives it a real, you know, it brings back the love. It brings back the hope that we all have for the future. Absolutely. But but it just breaks my heart when she walked in there and there was three roses and four men. I get it. Somebody's got to go home. And the worst part is yet to come after the overnight. Somebody's got to go home, you know? Yeah. Well, that just breaks my heart. Susan, the sooner they go home, the sooner we get to meet them. What is wrong with you? (laughs) Approach to hair health, a dryer, free shipping, capsule wardrobe, comfy, and I love how they have and more creating. Ready to hit the ground running? Happy. It's time for on the bottom if you want to be a part of the next IBM. Let's create. So wait, so you know how they have the coming um, shows and then they'll put on the bottom, if you want to be a part of the next season, please yeah. fill out your application. I almost downloaded it. I want to apply again. You think they'll accept me for the next Bachelor? I think you and I should do it together. <laughs> All right, Kathy, it's time for our question of the day. So are you ready? Oh, I am so ready. <laughs> Okay, you want me to read it or are you going to read it? So what's something you did as a parent that you're incredibly proud of? Just one though, Kath, not everything. (laughs) One thing that you did as a parent that you're incredibly proud of. I was going to make a funny joke, Susan, and say I got three kids to adulthood without, you know, murdering (laughs) anyone. (laughs) Uh, But what I would say is, and the truth is, I'm incredibly proud that all three of my children give back to their community. They all, they either have jobs where they, you know, give back or they all find time to give back to their community. And I think that's That's beautiful. That's what about you? Um, First and foremost, all three of my children believe in God that we instilled that in them and they were able to choose what type of religion they wanted to practice or whatever, but they, they got that here at home. And I was really wanting to say, no, wait, really wanting to say that they all know how to clean, but they don't do it. So (laughs) I guess I did. You know what? You and I share that too. cook. Susan and I are both really uh, very clean, neat, and tidy, organized people. And some of our children are, and some of our children were raised by bears in the woods. Although Brittany's trying to cook. I think Nick really took up the cooking part because he'll come over and ask me, mom, how do you make that again? And he does it. So that that's kind of cool. And they're all great parents. Well, two of them. Wait, can Nick I just tell you, you sure. as you know, we beat this one to death. What? I don't cook very much. I yeah, can we know, cook a little bit. Know. Do you know that my daughter and my son, two of my three children like are cook. really good cooks. No, and really good cooks. The next time I visit, I'm going to their house. I'm just saying. <laughs> What's the matter? You don't like my frozen macaroni and cheese? <laughs> you Fine. did not serve that. Next you time I'll give you frozen ordering. lasagna. You do. All right. Okay. Let's get into these fan questions. All right, it's our favorite it. time. Let's we love it. this. All right. Here we go. Question okay. number one. Mm-hmm. This is from Marissa, who is 43 from Chula Vista, California. 
Hi, Kathy and Susan. Hope you are both doing well. I wanted to write in about an issue I'm having with my partner. We have been together for two years and just moved in together earlier this year. Something I've noticed only since we started living together is that when he gets angry, he gives me the silent treatment. The silent treatment really doesn't work for me because I have no idea what he's feeling and what he's upset about. It just makes me anxious and spiral as I'm someone who needs to talk things out. I feel like it's just really childish and we need to have better communication if we're going to last for the long haul and possibly get married. I have brought it up with him and he says he will try to be better, but it seems to only have gotten worse. Do you think this is a major red flag and or a deal breaker for us? If not, how do you think we can work through this? Any advice is welcome. Thank you, ladies, and love your podcast. Well, thank you, Marissa, for reaching out to us. So this is like a two-part thing for me, Kathy. Okay. A, she did bring it up to him that it doesn't work for her. I get that. B, sometimes if you know that's who he is and he has to do that silent thing for him, when he's ready, he will discuss it. Now, when I put myself in her shoes, I feel the same way. I would haunt him like, okay, I get your silent treatment. What the hell's on your mind? What do you want to talk about? Let's talk about it. Because if it goes on too long, then I'm pissed off and I don't even know why I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off because you're silent. Do you know what I mean? So try and sit him down again, have a really serious conversation like, babe, let's let's plan on you can only give me the silent treatment for three hours after that. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to go crazy. What do you think? Well, I, I actually somewhat agree with you. I think that when... Um, some people just need time to cool off, yes, yes. to ponder, meditate, whatever it is mm-hmm. they do to to process whatever's happened. The danger is, um, and I think that's where, where Marissa is going here, is my husband was a guy that would process it internally and then it was over and he didn't want to talk about it. I know, Susan, you'll be shocked to know that I wanted to talk things out. So that was the problem. It's not that you have to do it right in the moment, but oftentimes it seems that people who want to, you know, not talk about it in the moment really are saying they don't want to talk about it at all. So Marissa, my advice to you would be, let them have, excuse me. You notice where she said she never noticed it until they moved in together. So obviously that's just how you wouldn't even know. Like you just made a great point. He might have gotten over it by the time he saw her again. Exactly. Because they weren't living. Exactly. And it might not even be her. He right. might be upset about something else right. about his but, day. But the point yeah. is, if I, if Marissa's probably a lot like me. She wants to know what he's upset about, well, so whether it's I. about that's her like, or... Exactly. Yeah. So Marissa, my advice to you would be... Um, you know, Susan's right, give it some amount of time. But the communication I would have is that he needs to communicate with you at some point what he's angry about, where his head is, how he got from A to B, because otherwise it's just going to cause you distress and then you're going to become resentful. So, you know, give him his space and then say, we got to talk about it. And it's our three C's, correct, Kathy? Yeah. Communicate. Yeah. Commit it. Compassion. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. They're having these issues that they've moved in and she said for the long haul and maybe even marriage. So I'm not sure how committed this is at this point. But Marissa, I wish you all that we both wish yeah. you all the best and, and, and it let may us not know be as bad as she thinks right Just, right is it a major red flag no, no you know no. it's not a major red flag it's only a major red flag For if her. you two cannot come to an understanding about how you're going to communicate about issues that's when yeah. it becomes a major red flag i agree hey Kathy and I agree again. I, know. I don't know Susan, what's happening here. I think, but thank I think you, Marissa. A, I think there's an eclipse outside. We're, <laughs> we're agreeing too much. <laughs> All right. We have question number two, and this is from Alice, who is 27 from Spokane, Washington. Golden Hour Podcast. Hello. My name is Alice, and I have a question for you. I am in a new relationship with a great guy. He checks all my boxes and seems to be what I've been looking for in a partner. Well, that sentence right there just gave me goosebumps. 
Well, hold, hold your breath because read the next sentence. Uh, I like the first part. The only problem is he keeps bringing up his ex. Oh, God. They broke up years ago. And he really does seem to be over her. He just keeps bringing her up casually. Like, if we go somewhere we went or if there's a funny story, I have told him that it bothers me and that I don't want to hear about his past because it takes me out of the present and us being together. He says he understands, but has still brought her up a few times since. Do you think this means he's not over her? I really can't tell. And my friends say it seems like he's obsessed with me. So maybe he just is someone who is a little too nostalgic. Curious about your thoughts on this. Thank you, ladies. I, I think he's a I don't, If we of agree habit. on this one, I, I got to say... If they broke up a long time ago and he's still talking about her, he has either not had a life in between dating her and meeting this one. So all he has to talk about is his ex from 10 years ago, because apparently he had no life between her and meeting this new one, Alice. Um, but I, I don't think it's a red flag, but it does concern me that. He talks about her a lot, particularly when you said uh, it makes you uncomfortable. And he says he understands, and then he keeps doing it. You so think, I don't do you know. What do you it's think? A creature of habit, like maybe he's familiarized. Oh my gosh, I remember doing this with her. Or she didn't say like he's complaining about her, just that he talks about her. I'd like to know what it is he's talking about. Like, do you really maybe care? He's just wait. Do you really ones? care? I guess I don't know. I don't know if it would bother me. Yeah. Oh, well, let me let me just paint a little picture for you. I, and you know this story, I went out on a date with a guy whose wife had passed away like three years previous to the date. All the guy did Let's was, I don't know what her name was. Let's call her Susan. All he did was talk about Susan <laughs> yeah. all night. I was like, Get No, that me. I understand. That, that Why? you feel like, because it's his past, his wife that passed. Well, this, this one doesn't. Talking, this is his past too. Yes, but she's not dead. Oh, so you, so wait a minute. I think Let me get, what he, wait, that man on. was still grieving maybe or still trying to compare. Then he every shouldn't new be woman. dating. So well, let me get this right. So, but we're not talking about him. <laughs> so <laughs> it's okay to talk about your dead exes, just not your current. Not like, constant. Remember on exes. our show, Kathy, when Gary had his wife in the closet, the picture. And all I kept thinking was when you pick somebody to be with, I hope yeah. you put that picture away. Yeah, well, somewhere where he could refer to it, maybe. But you have to let go. You don't replace, but you let go and you move on. I mean, but for this case, he says he understands, but has still brought her up a few times. Yeah, honey, if you could tell me in what context he's bringing her up and that might help me to say, hey, tell him to. You know what? Or well, <laughs> also if if he's made improvement, Alice. Let's you know if you brought her up all trying, the time in the beginning, yeah. and now it's just a few te a times. That's called pro uh, progress. So give the guy a break, um, Kathy. But would you be like when he brought it up? Say you're that. Would you be like, here we go again? I gotta hear about her. I mean, try uh, that. Oh, we playing moral quandary? <laughs> no, God, don't even bring it up. Okay, so go wait, on. wait, wait. I have just one. I just want to say one more thing to Alice. Yes, yes. If this guy ticks all your boxes and he, he seems perfect, I want to be the first to say mazel to you and break the bad news to you. He's not perfect. You know why, Alice? And There's no either. such thing as perfect. So love him and embrace him with all his imperfections. And hopefully he stops bringing up his ex. But he's making progress. So stick with that. That reminds me, Kathy, of a verse, a poem that I sometimes do at a wedding, and it starts with, he's not perfect and you aren't either, but sometimes you meet somebody that was perfect for you. Oh, man, Susan, you, cool. should, you I, should chisel that in stone at my front what, walk. <laughs> okay, All right. moving right along. All right, let's move it along. <laughs> this one is for um, question from Ben. He's okay, 36 ben. from Hollywood, Florida. Nice. I, I spent a summer in Hollywood, Florida once. Okay. Hello, and uh, Susan and Kathy. My wife listens to your podcast, and she told me to write into y'all. 
spoken <laughs> like a true Southerner, for some advice because she doesn't know what else to say. So here I am. Nice. We are expecting our first baby early next year, and we are both excited. We just had our little gender reveal party with our family last month, and we found out we're having a boy. We smiled and acted excited with the family, but when we got home, we both broke down. Aww. We were really hoping to have a girl, and now it feels like we are less excited about the baby, and we feel absolutely terrible about that. I don't feel like I can talk to my friends about it because whenever I share that I am not as excited about a boy, they think I'm crazy. I just always saw myself as one of those girl dads. I, I know we will maybe have a girl in the future, but I can't shake this super disappointed feeling about the kind of family we thought we'd have. My wife said you both have boys and girls, so I was hoping you could give us some advice on how to get excited about a baby boy. Thank you both. We look forward to hearing what you have to say. Go, oh Susan, because I got Bless this one. Bless their hearts. <laughs> Bless their hearts. So I will say this. When that baby comes, you're going to laugh at the feelings that you're having right now because it's a, something you can't even just put into words. It won't matter. But I get it. You were hoping for something and it was a little disappointing that, oh my gosh, it's not a girl. All the girl clothes you want to buy, all the all the things. Usually people get upset when it's not a boy. So this one's a little different for me. No, that's but, just because you're Italian, Susan. Most people don't give a <laughs> damn what they're having as long as there's 10 fingers and 10 toes. Everybody wants a son to carry on the name, you know, yeah, the whole whatever. bit. But God bless you. I just hope that baby's perfectly healthy and you will never think twice about what you're feeling yeah. right now. But it's so, okay. If you wanted yeah. a girl, it's so all right. Ben, he, yeah, here's what I would say to you. It's your first child, and you didn't have to tell me this was your first child with your wife because well, everything you wrote screams first-time <laughs> parent. Um, but here's what I'm going to say to you. If the most important thing, and it sounds trite, but it really isn't, the most important thing is that you have a healthy mm -hmm. child. That's what matters. And whatever God or whatever higher being, if you believe in that, uh, is going to give you is is the best thing ever. Healthy, 10 fingers and 10 toes. <laughs> and here's the right. thing. W Susan's right. When you hold that baby for the first time and you, and you realize that you and your wife created this child, mm -hmm. your heart will expand. I remember I had a son. My first child was a son and I really wanted a girl the second time and I had another son. And when I held him, I was worried, Ben, I was worried I wouldn't love him as much because, you know, I had a son. I had the perfect son. Um, but you know what happens? You you hold that baby and your and heart expands. Yeah. It just it. I can't explain it to you, but you love that one as much as the first one. And and so good luck to you. Congratulations. Wait, Kathy, don't you don't you want to say to them, it's all right to have that feeling. Don't be embarrassed. Of course embarrassed. it is. Just say, oh, man, I'm disappointed. I was really hoping for a girl, but I yeah. can't wait to see my yeah. son. I mean, and it's okay. Wrong. It's, you know, nothing it's okay wrong. to feel disappointed. But as Susan said, it's going to be short lived because yeah. once you hold that baby and you, oh, the first smile, your son will have you wrapped around his finger, That's Ben. Right. So get ready. Get <laughs> oh, ready. yes. Congratulations to you both. Let us know how and everything Ben's goes. Ben's wife don't ever, ever hesitate to ask us anything, but I'm glad your husband went and wrote it for you. Yeah. I really am. Good and really, luck to you guys. Best of, to both of you. I've been on the hunt to curate my perfect capsule wardrobe and spoiler alert, it's from Abercrombie. Every capsule needs a staple pair of jeans and Abercrombie's low-rise baggy jean has become my new favorite. Other Shop in IBM.com slash pack of desserts to share woman into a delightful podcast friends for some love. And she's from Syracuse, New York. Good afternoon on the Crumble app and experience dessert like never before. All righty, question number four, and this is from Kat. She's 62, and she's from Syracuse, New York. Good afternoon, girls. I don't really have anything to ask in particular, but I was just dumped and thought I'd turn to my podcast friends for some love. I was in a fairly new relationship. I was super excited about the for the first time since my late husband passed. It had been years since I dated, and I was so happy to be feeling those butterflies again. 
Then about nine months in, he just dumped me and blindsided me out of nowhere. He didn't give me much of a reason, just said he realized that he didn't want to be tied down. And she quotes, what 70-year-old man says this? I have an answer for that. (laughs) Now, we haven't talked in a few weeks, and I'm just totally heartbroken. I can barely sleep or eat or get out of the house right now. I was so excited about finding love again. Any words of wisdom or love for a broken heart are welcome. Love you girls lots and just wanted a virtual hug. I am sending the biggest, we are sending the hugest hug your way. Yeah, we are. Let let me just say, Kat, first of all, I'm so sorry about the loss of your husband. You know, I'm I'm living that life too. Um, What 70-year-old man says this? What, you know, he doesn't want to be tied down? Probably a guy, you don't say, but either he was divorced or single, whatever his situation was, He likes the idea. This doesn't reflect on you, Kat. That's what I want you to hear. He he is obviously enjoying his freedom, his his newfound whatever it is he's doing, and either he just wants to keep it that way, or and that has no reflection on you. Or he dated you for nine months and he decided, you know what? Maybe that's when he realized he didn't want to be tied down. Or maybe you're not the right one. And you know what, Cap? That's okay. It's okay that you're not the right one for him because you're going to meet a lot of guys who aren't right for you. So we, you know, I love you. We love you. I'm sorry you have a broken heart. It will get better. It will and, get out and, and get out and do things, though, Cat. Do not sit on your sofa, just. You know, moaning, but moaning the fact that you guys have broken up. Get out, get up, move. You'll feel better. What do you think, Susan? And what I want to share is I get it. What an asshole that he blindsided you just when you thought things were great. It sucks. It hurts. You got to pick up the pieces. You can't go crazy trying to get him back because then we look foolish. And Mm -hmm. trust me, I've done these foolish things and I'm so happy now today that I've overcame some of these things that I would do because I wouldn't understand why. What Was it something I said? Did I do something? Don't even ask. Obviously, it's not the right one. And it does sting. And I'm glad you reached out to us because we would hug you so much. Wait, but Susan, I have a question. I have a question. Do you think, I know she feels blindsided. I know Kat feels blindsided. But I'm guessing, you know, the guy's not necessarily a jerk. He may have been, wait, he may have been feeling undecided and maybe started pulling away a little bit. And because she wanted it so much, she didn't read the room. We do that when we we want something. That's what I'm saying. We don't know. Right. I'm saying we don't know. So, Kat, maybe he was struggling for the last few months to find a way to tell you, and you were just so happy you didn't want to see it. But either way, it doesn't matter. He's not the right guy for you. Please pick yourself up. Yeah, go get your it's, hair. It's you still know. a big ouch, though. It, it is. is a big ouch. It but just stinks. It does stink. But you know what? Sitting around and telling yourself how awful you feel and, you know, life did me wrong is not going to get her to a better place. So, Kat, get up. Time does, though. Time does. Time Time and find some new clothes. Go shopping, Kat. Retail therapy. See, that would be me. Retail therapy. (laughs) Get your hair done. Go get your nails done. Or... You know, when you get under somebody else, you get over that. Listen, Cat, I will be in <laughs> Auburn, New York for Christmas because that's where my son-in-law's family lives. So if you need a shopping buddy, let me know. I'll take you out. We'll paint the town white oh, and you'll no, be laughing. Just Kathy, go to dinner and drinks with her. I'll do the <laughs> shopping. Thank you. <laughs> but thank you for writing in and sharing. And, and my heart goes out to you. All right, Kathy. Okay. It's time for a game today. And guess what? I'm so excited about. We're switching things up. It's yeah. not wait, that game. Wait cast. a second. Yes. Just for our listeners, I would like you to know there is no shock and awe here for Susan saying we're switching things up. I'm All so Susan's happy. done is bitch, moan, and complain to the producers about how much she hates moral quandary. Ugh. See, she's still, she's name. still, y'all can't see it. it. She's making a face. I don't get so, it. so we're what playing these, life advice roulette. 
That's right. What could these wonderful producers do but make you happy? So let's get going and play Life <laughs> Advice right. We're going to take turns reading some common pieces of advice, some of which are hot takes. And we will each discuss if we agree or we disagree and why. You want to read the first one, Kathy? All right. Yeah, I got it. I got All it. Right. All right. You agree or disagree. Sometimes it's okay to settle. You don't always need to chase the perfect situation. Good enough can be just fine. For example, romantic relationships. You agree or disagree? I disagree. And you know what I like about this game? Because I get to say what I think <laughs> about me. I can't guess what somebody else is doing. I failed that game for a few. <laughs> th- th- thank the producers again, Susan. Thank, thank you, the- uh, producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. My Show golden hour gratitude. producers. I love each and every one of you there today. You go. <laughs> okay. I think sometimes it is okay to settle, um, but not when it comes to a romantic relationship. Well, then, but, then you don't but agree. But wait a minute. Well, no, it you says... You just contradict it yourself, Kathy. You don't always need to chase the perfect situation. Listen, Susan, there yes, are no perfect men. We, we, You and I have talked about this. Nobody you, said perfect men. We're talking no, about a perfect romance or relationship. I'm saying there is no perfect romance or relationship. We all settle. What are you willing to put up with? We've all talked about it. So yes. settling, I think that's the wrong word. It's it's if you know that it's not something you want and something you can't live with, then mm-hmm. you're settling. But, you right. know, if I want a tall, dark and handsome guy with a thick head of hair and I meet a tall guy with a bald head, am I settling? Hell no. 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 Right. That's no. all I'm saying. All right. It depends on what it is. All right. I'll give you, all right, you do the I'll next one. You. All right. You don't have to love your job. It's OK to just like it. Not everyone finds passion in work, and that's okay. Absolutely agree. Hmm. And I'll tell you why. My jobs. Yes, but some people find their love and passion in their volunteer work, in their family life. That's their thing. Sure. Right. So you don't have to just like your job. Okay. All right. right. Oh, the the next one. I wish it was mine. Oh no, it's mine, and and I get to give my opinion first. (laughs) <laughs> Fake it until you make it actually works. Confidence can come through acting like you know what you're doing, even when you don't. And I'm going to say so strongly that I agree with Absolutely. this state. I knew you would too. Absolutely. And you know why? Because it's the old belief that if you believe in yourself, if I wake up every morning and say, Kathy, you got this, then my behavior, my attitude is going to be that all day long. Absolutely. So yes, it out to fake the it until you make baby. it, friends. Mm-hmm. Blood is thicker than water. Family Ugh. is family. And just because you don't get along doesn't mean you cut ties. Oh, that's a tough one. It depends on what that family member did, but they're right. Family is family. It's blood. You just learn to deal and you accept things that you cannot change. So that sounds like something out of a Norman Rockwell album that you dug up. <laughs> I think uh, alcoholism, that's one of the steps or something. Except the things you cannot change. Yeah, people in AA. That was one of the things I learned from my, my ex-husband going through it. Yeah. What? what? What did you family learn? Family is family. Well, One great. Their, their, fin- yeah, yeah. And, and vanilla milk is vanilla milk. What's your point? My point is that except just for things because, you cannot change. Yes, but you don't. How, how much time do you have to spend with family that you don't like? I'll be very honest with you. I come from a large family and I don't spend a lot of time. Granted, we live in you know, diff- very different states. They wow, Most of my family lives in Massachusetts. You know, I see my brother in California and I'm very close with my sister who lives in Ottawa, Canada. But the rest of them, I don't really see that much. Okay, but the, the, we're just saying a family is family and just because you don't get along well, by definition, doesn't mean you cut the ties. So if you didn't get along, would you cut ties completely? Well, I got one sister. I'm thinking about it. Well, yeah, you've had a different child than the most, I will say. Let's move on to the next. One, okay, go. <laughs> you don't have to be a morning person to be successful. Productivity isn't tied to waking up early. Night owls can thrive too. Absolutely. I suppose, but I like to be the morning. Listen, you better believe this, Susan. If you're a night nurse that works the 11 to 7 shift, you better believe it. <laughs> I guess anything that happened. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. You don't need to forgive someone to move on. 
letting go of resentment doesn't always mean offering forgiveness. Whoa, this was meant for me. Well, good. What do you think? <sighs> letting go of resentment is really difficult. I do need to forgive. Even though it'll always be, I might still always resent, but I have to tell myself that I forgive some somebody for something to move on. I can't open myself for new if I'm not past the, I mean, we're talking yeah. relationships, right? Yeah. Well, I, I don't think it's necessarily just relationships, but I think, um, I do. Cause that's what we're talking about. Don't well, you? okay. But I, I, in other I words, think, you can't move on if you're still resenting somebody. No, for I what agree with you. you. If you yeah. res I agree, but okay. I also think if we're talking about relationships, you can, this is something I had to learn. You can forgive someone for bad behavior or, or some, some issue that occurred, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you need to go back a lot. I've met people who think, well, I forgave him or I forgave her so I can jump back in. For me, those don't go hand in hand. I think that be, being able to move on requires that you're able to forgive and let go of the resentment. But sometimes people take that as a pass. I forgave him. Yeah. Right? Letting go of resentment doesn't always mean offering forgiveness. So I think, yeah, we want to say we're forgiven, but we might not deep down inside. Because if you're hurt that bad, that, that's Susan, tough. I have, let me just tell you, I have let go of all the resentment, and I have forgiven you for every transgression. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> all right, go on. Oh, this is a good one. Go but ahead. for you, this is perfect. Go. Money can buy happiness to an extent. Financial security and comfort ran significantly improve quality of life. Hmm. Do you agree or no, disagree? No, I mean, money makes it easier sometimes, but then, then you want bigger and better things. So it's not always that that's a hard one. Financial security and comfort can improve the quality of life. It doesn't have say to it always does, but I no, think that right. is a no brainer. It, yeah. it absolutely can. Yeah. And yeah. people who have serious illnesses, <clears throat> you know, who have the financial means to, <clears throat> excuse me, who have the right. financial means to fight that illness because they have that money. Uh, financial security can, yeah. you know, a lot of issues yeah, in marriage come. Are over money. Yeah, over yeah. money. Yeah. So, yeah, All I right, think it absolutely can. All right. Your partner doesn't have to be your best friend. Different relationships serve different purposes. It's okay if they're not your everything. I can tell you for me, I, I love the concept of having a partner to be my best friend. That's all I live for. But I don't, my husband and I were not best friends. We knew each other, but I had lots of girlfriends. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't, so I have never experienced that. Have you? Mm. I want my best friend. That's what I, I do too. Say. I want my best like, friend. Like I look at Lottie and Ray and they're best friends and they both have friends outside the marriage. They're just, they're like to have the perfect marriage to me. But, you, well, what, excuse me, they have what? The perfect marriage. No, they do not have to me, the perfect I said to me, when I look at them as a couple, to me that they, it's perfect. They get along, they're fun together. Okay. You right. don't owe anyone an explanation for your life choices. Just because someone asks doesn't mean you need to explain yourself. Wholeheartedly uh, agree. Yeah. Wholeheartedly. Yes. I mean, God. if it's your husband or wife or partner God. asking you, yeah, you probably owe them an explanation. Other than mm -hmm. that, not feeling like chatting about it. All right. All right. You, you don't have to hate in. someone <laughs> just because your best friend does. People's conflicts are their own and you can form your own opinions and relationships. Duh. Duh. True to that. True to that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that I, was now, way more fun than. Go ahead, say it, Kath. Uh, the game I'm seriously missing <laughs> called Moral Quandary. I hope they bring it back soon. It was my favorite, but of course, you know, whatever Kathy wants, Susan gets. Okay, uh, whatever. That does it for this episode. That was fun. Uh, happy that was hour. Fun. I Thanks think I got us. through that one so much better than that. 
moral. So everybody, be sure to submit your questions to us at bachelornation.com slash golden hour. Wait, wait, we, Susan, could yes. you ask them? Could we ask people to please write in their votes? Do they want to see more moral quandary or more? Oh, yes, of- please do. People, <laughs> please agree with me. I'll come find you. Just- <laughs> And thank you guys for listening to us. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. We love giving you advice. We love your comments. So please keep them coming. And in the meantime, we hope you will listen to Bachelor Happy Hours Golden Hour on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. That's See us. you next time. Take care. Yeah. 